Yeah, but this building is not to be photographed for security reasons. It can? Because of what, no, because of the nature of the building and because of security features that are in the building, there's no photography. Welcome back to the channel, guys. Today we're here at the Bank of England commercial printing factory, Della Rue in Loughton, an IG postcode. So we'll park the bike up here. Parking is not permitted, vehicle liable to be removed. Obviously they have got double yellow lines, but it doesn't affect street furniture. <laughs> so yeah, that's a normal industrial estate. We've got home bargains down there. We've got a business here. So yeah, public footpath all day long. Let's go and have a little walk down to see what this place looks like. So the first sign we come to, Bank of England, Debden. Delarue Currency. Reception down there, visitor and staff car park, goods, deliveries, all other vehicles. But look, no photography. Well, that might be your rules inside. CCTV, another no photography sign, I presume, that's been worn out and that one is unreadable. The Bank of England is monitoring and recording CCTV images for the purposes of maintaining the security of the premises, the prevention and detection of crime and the safety of our people and visitors. There you go. So yeah, lots and lots of barbed wire, a double layered fence, as you would expect. A bit like a high security prison. So let's continue to walk down and see what else we can see. So through the fence, we can see one of those rising roadblocks over there. And a traffic light system to the left. But they're not making it easy to see through the fence. <laughs> I think it's double layered on the outside and on the inside. And they've got this steel ram proof barrier. Got a post office vehicle moving around inside. One of those post office cash in transit vehicles. The roadblock is just lowering down for it. The barrier is just raised. And it's allowed through. So there's some alarm of some sort going off. I'm not sure whether they've seen me on the camera and then stopped the shutter from opening. There is some sort of announcement being made on the tannoy. Await further instruction or something. Let's listen together. A further alarm going off now. How bizarre. Yeah, the tannoy is saying, attention, there is an emergency. So we're still walking down the pedestrian footpath. We get to this sign, to gain authorised access, press the intercom, alternatively call that number. But the barriers are wide open. So we've literally only just walked down this path here. There is a, a nice camera there as well. So that's nothing to do with pedestrians. Let's carry on. So I'll just cross the road to get a better view of the place. So many cameras and so much barbed wire. They've even got a camera up the top there, look. But it looks a very old building. And then you get down to the end of the road where they've got a bit of a gatehouse, a bit of a hut with nobody in it. 
And another gate, Delarue currency, use main entrance when gate is closed. And it's got another rising roadblock here. And there's a man with high vis just over in that distance. Opposite there's like an old disused tennis court of some sort. And then the public footpath just continues with no restrictions at all. Down in this direction, printing works, deliveries, turn left, visitors and staff parking straight on. So this is visitors parking. And then you come to the main delivery gate with big red X's above the gates. A vehicle lock, just like a prison, but much more secure than a prison with the rising roadblocks and the rising posts. Barbed wire all around again. Double lead fence. And they've even got some sort of uh, lookout tower up there. And then we even have an entrance which is signposted reception where you can go through those doors. And they even have the motion detection wires linked to these anti-ram wires. And down here, it looks like they've got some electrics, some new electrics coming into the public car park area. So as we walk back round to the other end, I'll read you a little bit of information. This place was built in 1954 when the Bank of England began construction of its new banknote printing works in Debden, Essex. Hiya. Hiya. Yeah. You're not allowed to photograph around here. It's private property. Oh, where does the private property start? Uh, where the barriers are. Okay. The road. I'll do it from there. No problem. Okay. This is no photography at all. The signs are along the building. But so, well, it says no photography right at the start on the public footpath. Yeah, from there. So that's why I've ignored it. But from there, there's no photography. This is no, on the, pub site. on the public footpath at the start, it says no photography. That's where the private property starts. No, it don't. It does. There's a fo there is a footpath, but there's still no photography. Can we just make it clear on where I can stand? Is that alright? Anywhere where the building is. You're not allowed to film any part of this building. That's wrong. No. I agree with you that I can't um, film while I'm on your land, right? And this is the... This, this is, is a government building. There's no filming. No photography. Yeah, I agree that I can't film while I'm on your land. But I'll just return to the public land, which is... Do we agree it's just past that corner? No. No. Do you see where the little railings are? Way down the rest of the road? You don't own that. I believe the bank does. No, because it's access to other businesses. Okay, one second. Um, Echo Base from Echo 6 Mobile. Um, is it possible to get Colin out here, please? Just so I can um, clarify some details. <laughs> Shall we walk to where I think public yeah, starts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then that's me being reasonable with yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. But if you look, if you read along, and you're walking along the side of the building, on what you're saying is public footpath, you will see red no photography signs all yeah. the way along. Yeah, I just and ignored those because uh, yeah, that's... this building is not to be photographed for security reasons. It can. Because of what, no, because of the nature of the building and because of security features that are in the building, there's no photography. Yeah, it's not against the law to, to film it. Um, we'll, we'll wait for Colin to come out. So, uh, and we'll see what he says. Do you know if you put signs up about no photography and stuff yeah. like that, they're just requests. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it can't be enforced. Yeah. So when people like myself come round and want to take the photos yeah, and yeah, the yeah. videos, then we ignore what we know is not a lawful yeah. request. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we will work within the boundaries of the law, and I believe that where you've got this access to the tennis court across yeah. the road, is the tennis court yours? No. So who... No, that belongs to the... Um... The uh, sports centre over there. Well, I'm going to stand at near the sports centre entrance then because that's not no, yours, um, is it? Yeah, no, I think it's fine. I just need you calling. I oh. need you calling. Uh, we're just disputing whether or not you can take photography. Yeah. He said yes. That's why I wanted calling. Yeah, obviously, if you're standing on public land, me I am filming you. Yeah, I'm going to stand on public land, so if you want to talk, I'll be out there, all right? Yeah, I think. Oh, so, whilst they uh, 
decide what stance they're going to take. I'm going to get myself off their land to make this video a little bit easier to defend. <laughs> because we know we can take photos and videos of anything interesting at all from public. And it's clear that they don't want me on their land. So let's stand over here. The entrance to the sports club pitch. Which we can see just in the distance down there. So he's just trying to get Colin. Colin must be some sort of big boss to attend. So the gentleman is still trying to call for Colin. It's a good job it's not an emergency, isn't it? With this delay. So yeah, reading more from the website, the main production hall, which is just behind this building, one side of the arch roof was set with windows to maximize the natural light within the hall. And the website mentions strong rooms. Secure strong rooms provided space for sheets of banknotes to dry off between stages of the printing process. They were built next to the main production hall, close to the production line. This reduced the distance the part printed banknote sheets needed to be moved at each stage, improving both efficiency and security. But we all know that nowadays it's all polymer and there are four banknotes in circulation at present. The £5, the £10, the £20 and the £50. So I'll just get one out of my pocket so we can have a little talk about the banknote. So lots of security features, you know, it's got the raised Bank of England part. It's got the window here, which has always got gold on one side and silver on the other side. You've got the 3D crest as shown us there and always on the back of the crest there is a badge and the badge is always coloured with the same colour of the note. So if you did put this under ultraviolet light there will be a big 20 in the middle and down here it says let me just zoom in on this so you can see we're doing this on the fly so it says 20 but then when you turn it it says pounds so these security features are what you check to see if your currency is real <laughs> there you go quick masterclass Yeah, I can't hear you, mate. Come, come closer. I can't hear what you're saying, mate. Yeah, we'll keep at least two metres, don't worry. No, I'm not talking about two metres. I am. You need to stop filming. It's against the bank's policy to film anywhere along this fence, and it is an offence. So yeah, it might be against the bank's policy, but is it against the law? We'll find out shortly. It's Colin coming, is there? Who? Colin. Who's Colin? The person who's going to be telling us more information. Is this is this your land? This road here. I'm not, I'm not to answer any of your questions. Well, I am trying to work with you. I want to stand on the public land, and I believe. Well, at the moment, you're not you're not on public land at the moment. Right. Where does your private land start? Because then, well, your rules apply on your land, right? So I just want to work with you on it. I want to do my filming from public well, land. You're not allowed to film anywhere along here. You're not allowed to film. When you say anywhere along here, can you define that? Well, there are signs up everywhere. Yeah, the signs are just a request. Oh, it's walking off now. So yeah, we've clearly established that this gated area. Is nothing to do with them so access down to the gated area is required there's a public footpath which doesn't restrict movement at all on the way down because we walk down it <laughs> so I do want to agree a point where I can stand and then we'll mention the drone so I'm thinking to myself with them having barriers here and being able to close them barriers, then it would be reasonable for 
a member of the public to stand that side of the barriers, that side of their possible restriction, and fly the drone from there maybe. But still, nobody's come out to clarify that point. You've still got that gentleman down there just watching. So just past the barriers, we've still got that gentleman down there and someone else walking up in this direction. We come to this Indian restaurant here. The entrance to the Indian restaurant is a bang opposite the Bank of England note printing factory. So any members of the public can come into this entrance. So we will not be moved from this point. No way. We've got this camera here following our every movement, which is quite understandable. No problem at all with that. We do not have our mask on. We've got nothing to hide, but we do have a gentleman now approaching from the right. And he did not talk to us, so we will not put him on camera. Well, not his face anyway. So whilst things are quiet, and we're standing outside Manjal Indian Restaurant, clearly on the public footpath, let's get David out and see what this place looks like from above. Just before we get David out, we've got a Loomis vehicle coming in, look. Managing cash in society. Going to collect some banknotes. So as always, we've checked on drone assist. There are no flight restrictions in this area. So let's go and have a look at what Delarue, Bank of England, banknote printing works looks like from above. We'll just come back a little bit. Get the whole of the site in the shot. So that's where we started. The bike's chained up just down there. And this is where the Royal Mail vehicle was attempting to get in the shutter when all the alarms sounded. You can see the printing hall at the back. When they built it, they made a lot of the roof with glass to let the natural light in, it says. And it says they've got the contract to print this money until 2028, apparently. So the entrance to the Indian restaurant, where I'm standing just there, we walked all the way down. We spoke about this little entrance here, the old tennis court. And we've got security standing just down there at the gate. We walked into the visitor's car park and we went over to this corner where we saw that uh, cable coming out of the site. We can see Loomis, who just arrived, trying to gain access onto the site over there. So let's go and have a look. So we can see that is stopped at the stop sign. So let's press on, <laughs> let's continue, we've got lots of steam coming out the chimney there look, and the nice train that's going past, it's right next to the railway, and we did read an article earlier to say that was strategic, it had a direct link into London. So around the back of the building, we can see lots and lots of glass to let that natural light in. And as always, let's see what's in the bins. We've got some metal there, got some wood and more wood. And then down on this side, we have some sort of paper recycling shredding area. <laughs> uh, hope they're shredding it properly. And then across the road, we've got some sort of sports and social club. 
with a few more courts just there the M25 in the distance on this very very foggy day is that a golf course lots more industrial units as we pan around which then gets us back to Delarue and Loomis have eventually made it onto site and we'll be heading for the shutters So you'll notice on the top of the Loomis cash in transit vehicle there's an identifier number there for when the helicopters need to help. <laughs> what an old looking building eh? Which is so important. All of the Bank of England polymer banknotes are printed here. So we can see now that the roadblock has fallen. The barrier has opened and Loomis are edging their way forward to back up to goods outwards. <laughs> Get loaded with millions and millions of banknotes. And you'll see the whole of this area is protected by these posts so whilst we're waiting for Loomis to reverse up to the shutter we've now noticed that the police have arrived Essex police making their way down to security who is now walking towards it's the furthest he's walked all day so there he is look giving his version of events to the constables how will they deal with it I'm sure we're due to find out So he's given his side of the story now. Essex police car number 42 is on its way up in our direction. So let's see what they've got to say, shall we? And still Loomis have still not been dealt with. Hello sir. Oh yeah. I'm just going to bring the drone back if you want to chat with me. The drone back? Yeah, I've got a drone up. I'm just going to bring it back before we start talking, alright? Okay, so well, what's... Um... Hold on, before we talk, let's just bring it back. It's safer, isn't it? There we go, I can help. Okay, so what's, uh, what's going on today? What's, what, what are we doing here today? What do you mean? What are, what are you doing here today? Flying a drone, making a video. Making a video of the Bank of England? Yes. Can I ask for what reason? Because it's very interesting. It's very interesting. Yeah, don't you agree? Okay. I guess, but... There you go. Is there any law against it? Okay. Uh, let me speak to my supervisor for a moment. Yeah, no problem. Just so we're clear, I'm not being detained at the moment. No, you're not being detained okay. at the moment. Thank you very much.
So we walked away just so we can put the drone away without being watched too closely. <laughs> So we're now back on the main camera um, I think the police are just checking with their supervisor whether there's any laws being broken but we just wanted to demonstrate to you that if the police do approach you while you're doing a lawful activity you don't have to remain there and answer any of their questions or even listen to them you are free to go and if you wish to answer any of their questions then that's your choice so Let's have a little walk. I mean, I would like to cross the road and just go back down there, but the fence is quite long. So let's go to the end of the fence and come back down the opposite side of the road. So here we are now, back where we started and the kind gentleman is letting me cross. So let's walk back down this side of the road get the final images and then move on so we'll notice through the fence that Loomis have still not been allowed up to the shutter that's shocking there should be a bit quicker than that I think so we've still got the police and the security guard getting their advice I do, yes. You do? Yes. Do you mind if I see that? Um, do you know the laws around asking for that? Uh, I actually don't, go on. So, so like if it's the Road Traffic Act, yeah. you have got entitlement to ask for the driver's details, right? Yep. Unless you suspect somebody committing a crime, mm -hmm. or it's um, Section 50, you can ask them for their details under Section 50 antisocial behaviour, yeah? but unless you suspect them of a crime, you cannot ask for people's details, right? Okay. So I have got one, mm -hmm. and I am willing to show you it on the top of the drone. Yep. I'm not willing to give you the number so you can identify me as a person, okay. unless you want to tell me now that you suspect me of any crimes. Unfortunately, you're not allowed to fly it within 50 metres of a building, so that would be the crime in question. That okay, we're about. so that's your suspicion of a crime. Yes. Would you like me to show you the drone code, which has now been updated, which says that my size of drone can fly within 50 metres? Well, that will put that matter to bed. Yeah, no worries. So, Civil Aviation Authority website, the drone and model aircraft code. The part where it mentions 50 metres, it's actually 150 metres away from residential, recreational, commercial, industrial, industrial areas, yeah? Mm -hmm. So it's 150 metres, not 50. Okay. And, but if you have a small drone, which is 250 grams or below, you can fly small drones and model aircraft that are lighter than 250 in residential, recreational, commercial, industrial, industrial areas. So all that's left for me to do is show you that my drone is 250 or below. Okay. And then that shows you I've not committed any offence. Okay, if you are too busy, then I can leave you to it. So, should we continue? You're too busy, okay. So, when they start talking on their radios, I think it's a bit rude. The fact that you're going out of your way to give your side of the story. They're saying you, they suspect you of an offence. We're now walking away from them, you know. What's it all about? Take control. Don't be interrupted with your comms. You've got two of you there. One person should be on the comms. The other person should be engaging with the members of the public. Yeah. The last thing, I just check it's under 12 Of course, yeah. That's exactly what I want to show you. So, that sticker there, you can see that's operator ID, which I'm not going to show you. But, on the drone, printed... Just there, look. 249. Uh, uh, ultra, ultra light 249G. What's, do, we don't, you know what, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like model of drone this is. A I mini, understand that's the make. Mini 3 Pro. Mini 3 Pro. 
ultra ultra light to it, basically it's the weight the weight that counts So, off to check it out once again. This security guard, he keeps hovering around, coming up and down. I would really like clarity on where their property starts because the barriers are open and there's no signs here at all. So that is one thing I am going to clear up with the constables before they depart because this clearly is open. This is fair game, all the way down there. Hiya. Sorry? Yeah, doing some filming in the area. We're opening hours like uh, uh, 12 to uh, 10. 12 to 10? Monday to Sunday. Monday to Sunday. we open. Okay. Uh, Indian and Sri Lankan food we are serving. Sri Lankan food, yeah, nice. Yeah, Sri Lankan. Okay, what's the most popular dish? Uh, for the grill and uh, Sri Lankan dishes are popular. Um, biryani, lamb chops, king prawn, um, private lamb curry, uh, prawn harapia, king prawns. This type of food is uh, nice. popular and less spices also. Do you sell alcohol? Yeah, we sell alcohol as well. Nice one. Thank you for your yeah. time. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Thank you, my Have you finished on comms? Okay. Yeah, that's how you do it. They see someone filming and they embrace it. They seize the opportunity. They don't know how many people are going to watch it or where it's going to go, but they see it as a, an advertising opportunity. Obviously, these guys don't want to advertise, but they can't stop members of the public showing an interest and making a video from the public footpath. When you're flying a drone of this weight, you can fly over these type of buildings, as I've showed you. There's nothing illegal. I did try and have a civil conversation with them. And I says, look, if you don't want me to be in the visitor's car park mm -hmm. where visitors will come and show an interest, is there a museum? Is there a reception? We don't know until we get around there. So I guess, guys, I will work with you. I want to return to public land. Where is it? And they couldn't tell me. So I've concluded it's past the barriers, which are open. As you can see, no signs there restricting movement. So what's your take on it? My take, I, I was just going to go back down to speak to them. We'll find to leave you to it. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'd like to know because I'm, I'm, I'm here for another 10 minutes. Yeah. I'd like to know where their land starts. Um, I, personally, I don't actually know. Uh, we are actually going to go speak to them now. Uh, I can ask them that question, but I don't know how long we'll be down there because we do need to go speak to them. Yeah. So I'm just going to roam around until I know the road doesn't change colour at all. Normally that's a good indicator. Yeah. The road's the same colour all the way down. Well, we can at least um, let them know that that's what your main question and then they might be able to... It's what question I've only asked I've only asked them that one question and it's like is it against the law they're saying look have you not seen the signs well no photography inside your land yeah you can control what people do on your land your policies they mentioned their policy of no filming but they tried to enforce that policy on a member of the public which is, is wrong really so I won't take any more of your time up because I know no, you're no, busy. We're actually going to just go drive down there and speak to them. That's okay, right. okay, yeah. yeah. I'm going to have a little walk to the gatehouse. I think the gatehouse might be the start of their land because do you know to the right, there's like a, a disused tennis court which belongs to the old social club. Okay. So if somebody else can access that, then I could be that somebody else. Okay. I won't go past that point for now. Okay. So... As police constables go, we did not have the tyrant. We showed you that you do not have to stand there. Am I being detained? No. You can walk away or you can continue to talk to them. I just wanted to move away and put my drone away without them capturing the operator ID. Then we saw a little bit of rudeness there as she spoke on comms whilst I was taking my time to help her understand the law so she doesn't make a mistake <laughs> of thinking that is a criminal offence by flying closer than 50 metres. 50 metres is to people. So if you're nowhere near buildings, 
but you're near people and you have a heavier drone than 250, then the 50 meters applies. Because ours is 249, there is no minimum distance to people and you can fly over places like this, which are so important to all of us. You think that note that you're touching that I showed you earlier was printed in this building here. So we've walked down now to this area where we presumed at the start we was allowed to stand. We'll just wait for the police to finish their final discussions, watch them drive off and we'll move on ourselves. And the lady with the dog, she's wandering around. I mean, there's nothing to stop her from going down there. Do you ever take, do you ever take your dog down that way? You can go down this way, to the right. Okay. And bang opposite this gate and this entrance <laughs> where we believe we're okay to stand. You come down this little mud path here and it takes you down a public footpath all the way down there. So whilst we wait for the police to educate these inside, we now have a man in a suit. So both constables are out of the vehicle, discussing it with him. So are they going to insist that we move back? So the man in the suit has now disappeared to the left there. I think they've gathered that if they just drive off, then my video will end but we need to see the police car leave sight so that there's no misunderstanding that the police have drove us away. So here they come. Are we going to get any final words from them? Yes, we are. Hello, sir. I have one last question. So, uh, when you own a drone, all of the them have to be registered in some way, like you said, like the number plate registered in that way, in order for us to check if you've registered it, we need to be able to see what the like, ID is on. Yeah, L like I said earlier, um, did you see it on the top of the drone? Did oh, you see I, the sticker? I, I saw the sticker yeah. on there. Yeah, so that indicates to you that I have an operator ID. Okay. okay. If the drone, if you can't see any ID, if you can't see a number plate on a vehicle, yep. then you look further. But the fact that you can see one, okay, that tells you I have got one. Now, you, for you to look that up, that's where you need suspicion of an offence. So you're not entitled to look it up because that would get you my details. Right. But if you suspect me of an offence like we spoke about earlier, yep. then you can either, if they don't give you that, you seize the drone. Okay. So that's where I am on it. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure you can check, but you, you can't possibly expect a member of the public to give you their details when they've done nothing wrong. That's fine. I just wanted to ask you. Yeah, yeah. I thought we... I thought we covered it earlier. Yeah, yeah. Was the gentleman still insisting that no filming's allowed? Say again? Was the gentleman in the suit, was he insisting that no filming's allowed? Because I presume that's what the call is about. No, no, no. They were just concerned that you may come in, basically. Come in where? To the back gate. You can't possibly get in there, can you? No. Uh, but obviously, if people are uh, hanging about outside, they may suspect that they may be trying to or something along those lines. Yeah. Um, that was what the call was about. I'll be completely honest with you about that. Um, uh, so they saw that you were filming and then were concerned that you were going to film and then try and get inside because filming on the premises is not allowed but obviously you're outside the premises yeah. so we've explained all that to them um, so it's all fine yeah there was a misunderstanding with security he says you cannot film even though you're outside mm -hmm. and I tried to discuss it with them civilly but it won't go in nowhere and surely that's their job you know if, if they feel I'm such a threat that I might enter mm -hmm. then step in use reasonable force to but there was nothing. There was not even no polite discussion about where the boundary line is. It was, in my opinion, they've wasted taxpayers' money calling you guys out. And the call weren't even regarding the drone, no. No, no, actually. Well. Wow. I had a drone until I saw it flying down. Wow. Well, normally, that's, that's enough reason. You know, they've got a drone. Let's go out and see if this is a lawful flight. Yeah. But just the fact that filming with no attempt to communicate with the member of the public about let's work together, you know. I'm going to show an interest in your building. Mm -hmm. Tell me how it will work for you guys. Mm -hmm. There was nothing. There was just call the police, it seems, which is bizarre. But it is what it is. The video will show them 
how professional they have been. You guys, I'll, I'll give you credit. Um, I said to you earlier, am I being detained? And I walked off. That was a little test to see if you had overstepped the mark. So I've got no intention of walking off, but I wanted to... You're free to do what you want yeah. to push, yeah. Yeah. So I think you've seen this type of thing before, but not in my style. Yeah? Outside the police stations. So that's it. Thank you very much for being professional, guys. And I'm, I'm going to wrap up now. I was waiting for you to leave. So there we go. I will give them credit. They have been very professional. They had one last attempt of trying to find out who I was with the operator ID there. So off they go. Bye guys. EU20 CME, need to clean. So that wraps up the video from Bank of England, Delarue, where they print all of our polymer notes. If you have enjoyed that video, do give it a thumbs up for me. And I'll see you on the next one, guys. Bye-bye for now. And security have finally gone in. I'm no longer a threat.